really clever idea for the cost of living crisis, right. eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed it was another era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to stomp and honk through the headlines like a mischievous majorette and a badass bassoonist to have fled the marching band. You're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Uh, yeah, brilliant. I don't know what it meant, but it, it sounded good. It's like a tone poem. I love your uh, little uh, <laughs> intros to our... Do you think our... I should, like, publish a sort of bog book? <laughs> Al Alex's, Alex's intros. Alex's Kevin Alex intros, yeah. <laughs> you could make a, a, an excellent Christmas book. Uh, lots to <laughs> get nobody. through uh, today, Alex, as usual. So let's get going on. We're still with the Kate Middleton uh, photograph. Uh, the Sun today, uh, what but I said... It, published in this building, part of our company, says, L leave Kate leave alone, her lay her off. I can, I can see that, but uh, this is just the most ridiculous situation. And frankly, uh, I'm not sure I believe the story we're getting right now. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, Kate wanted the picture to be perfect, so she edited. Nine uh, major edits on this picture. Still questions being asked about it. Now, Piers Morgan made the point, look, if we want to cut through all of this uh, confusion, just release the original picture before you edited it. Then we'd see uh, what you did. Why aren't they doing that? Uh, uh, so uh, the question is, Alex, does that picture even exist? So I got a very interesting take on this from my Beza yesterday as we were wandering the streets of London having a good old girly chat. And we both went, if you're looking like an absolute rotter and you're one of the most famous women on earth and this photo is going to go around the globe and you've just had surgery and you're in recovery and you've taken a photo, oh, God, my face looks a bit puffy, my hands look withered and bruised, where I had a cannula in them, whatever. You're going to do a few tweaks. But not just that. My mate, who's got four teenage daughters, said, you cannot get loads of kids sitting together, all looking sane and not doing something mental in the same photo mm -hmm. for love nor money. For yeah. love nor money, she's like, even if there was a picture where Kate was thinking, OK, I look OK, I don't look like a horror show, uh, one of the kids would have been gurning, another one would have been doing, like, you know, the little fingers oh, behind someone else's head. It's not unknown that pictures and, and, with and, children can be taken yeah, quite well, successfully. I just my of, question I, is, I my went, point, yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, my question is this. Uh, you're right, of course, it's difficult yeah. to get kids to behave properly. I think properly. she just wanted a but decent My question is, is, is does up? this original photo even exist? Uh, because the trees in the background are suspiciously mm. bloomy. It's as if it's bloomy. like the summer or something. Uh, and generally, I always thought she looked slightly out of proportion to the rest of the picture. So is this a composite that was just edited together? Uh, so there is no original picture because surely it's a pretty harmless thing to say, oh. OK, here's the picture before... Kate edited it, and then the whole uh, saga, this whole row, would be ended. But well, no, think, they won't <laughs> tell us. I think you're probably right. I think it possibly is a composite because I have a feeling yeah, that, you know, yeah. like I said, to get all those four kids' faces looking nice at the same yeah. time and not doing mad things. And Kate's also thinking, OK, I don't mind that face going around the globe to millions, billions, in fact, of people. Yeah, without a professional photographer and with time on your hands, I would get out the old tweakments if I knew how to. Yeah, maybe. But in future, you lot, use a professional photographer and use a professional to edit these pictures. Or just, this is, or just you don't, are the prince don't worry, and princess don't, you know, of Wales. Out. It was Mother's Day, you, you know. You the princess just, of Wales. Stop, beha up instead. stop behaving like a child in a grown up's world. This is serious. Oh. Don't do this. this no, I'm team. You, you've I'm embarrassed team yourself. Kate alone. You've embarrassed yourself, and you've. Uh, no. I think. I think you've very damaged. The uh, line of trust and between the people and the royal family. Since the days what of you? Hans Holbein, people have been getting their alone. pictures. I'm not the leaving her alone. Made this, to is look this is pathetic. This is pathetic. Well, I'm not. I'm not having a go. At it. I'm just saying. Yeah, I just does it this? Well, the, the, does this picture even exist? Be straight with us. 
Stop deceiving us. Tell us what happened. It's a show us the damn picture, picture on Mother's Day. Let's show us. The, well, well, is it? No, was it? I don't <laughs> Who think cares? so. I don't Who think cares? it was. I think it was a composite. Never known well, such you, you, noise about such nonsense, well, frankly. It isn't nonsense when every picture agency in the world has to cancel a royal picture. It's a scandal. Anyway, uh, I presumably in some sort of uh, way to tell us that all's well between uh, Kate Middleton and William and that Kate's uh, recovering well. And I, by the way, I really hope she is. Uh, a picture was taken yesterday, uh, ostensibly. There it is. There's her in Poor the background. Okay, guess what she's done wrong now? She's committed the crime of looking out of a window, looking at a wall, looking the wrong way. How dare you, Kate? Well, it doesn't look very... They don't look very happy, do they? Well, why do they have to look happy? He's reading some notes on his phone and she's on her way to an appointment. You don't sit there gurning like you just won the lottery when you're sitting in the back of a car going through central why London... Why are you making stuck excuses the for them? Don't, don't, don't pour... Because what? It's just mad. What are they doing? Sat in a car. Don't urinate on a good story, you know. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on, everyone. <laughs> right, uh, still with the Royals, uh, oh. and I'm sure this is nothing to do. You'll with... be joining this lot it... soon. No, I won't. No, you're this going. is. Oh, no, I just want honesty. I want decency. Tell us what happened with this photo and stop uh, trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Uh, but meanwhile, over at Westminster Abbey, it was the uh, Commonwealth Service yesterday, which uh, William raced to, as did uh, Camilla the Queen. Obviously, the king. King couldn't be there, but he did send a message by Zoom, uh, still committed to the Commonwealth and uh, all his good work there. Uh, but outside was a very, very sizable anti-monarchist uh, protesting rally uh, where they were all shouting, down with the crown, not my king. They had drums. Let's have a listen. Down with the crown! Down with the crown! Down with the crown! Down with the crown! I mean, they say down with the crown. I didn't. Um, I didn't um, think it was that bad a program. No, you can make a good. I quite enjoyed the crown. That. Didn't you like the crown? Down with the crown. You're not getting my joke. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, the crime was... I didn't like the series, Piggly. No, did I. I'm just making some joke. I'm down they with the crime. Why Westers like they're about to go fishing in the North uh, Sea? Let's have a think about that. Was it pouring with rain yesterday? I believe it was. That's yeah, probably why like they got raincoats on. Yeah, well, they're, they're trying to sort of... Sh they've got a uniform. It's the anti-royal uniform. Anti -royal uniform. You know, this is, you've got to have, like, a... You've got to have a uniform these days. And usually it's the sort of short fringe which shows mm. mental health issues. Down with the crown and damn Netflix for making that series. Uh, shall we uh, actually finally finish with the royals? Uh, yes. And uh, let's talk about uh, the, the, the new king of parliament, the new king of reform UK, <laughs> you Lee... You were going into a, a Lee, royal story. Lee, realized there wasn't one to go to, Well, uh, yeah, you? I'm using a royal kind of uh, illusion. Yeah. Right, so Lee Anderson, uh, let's just uh, remember what he said uh, as he was unveiled yesterday as uh, Reform UK's new MP, defecting from the royals. Let's have a listen uh, to what he said. He wants his country back. Like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. All I want, uh, Alex, and you can ask me this question, all I want is for him to do what he said that MPs who defect to other parties should do. He said, if you defect to a, 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 another party mid-term, uh, you should call a by-election. Why isn't he doing that? It's not mid-term, is it? We could potentially have a general election as well, soon as May, so it's suppose not mid-term. Why, why is he not doing what Ask he said? Ask Lee, I don't know. What am I? A spokesperson? Well, you've got something to do with Reform UK. I do, but I'm not Lee Anderson's spokesperson. do Reform UK should get their act together with this? Because people are really angry yeah, about this. But, uh, you say one they... thing and then you don't do it. Are they? Yeah, but I think, yeah, they I think, are. There, is a, I think there is a valid argument about saying let's gratuitously call a by-election. There could be an election anyway because he's going to have to go and contest that seat in a matter of months. So, you what? know, you could... And it costs a quarter of a million pounds. If it's mid-term, you've got two, three years representing a constituency, absolutely. But if you've got two months, and actually if you called a by-election, it might take two months for that thing to be organised, cost you, the taxpayer, a quarter of a million quid, and then about a week later, got to do it all again. Yeah, the so people, of Ashfield, a bit the people of Ashfield will remember what he said, and that's why alone, if he's lucky, well, he'll come fourth. That is where democracy 
is the power of people to go and decide whether yeah. you want to keep Lee or not. Yeah, they'll come fourth if he's lucky uh, in Ashfield. So Nasty, do you know what? I think, though, this is a pivotal moment. What he was saying yesterday, those words are sort of really echoed mm -hmm. around social media because people are saying he's, put, he's touching on something that is very true. It's the latest taboo, the thing you're not allowed to talk about, about like which is this fact that we feel like our history, our legacy, yeah. our culture and our values are being willfully burnt at the stake. Mm -hmm. We're told that we're all racist. We're told that we got things to be ashamed of and at the same time when we see other cultures who don't want to integrate mm -hmm. who actually seem to despise us marching on our streets we're not allowed to say even boo to a goose so you know i think he's actually saying something that's very important yeah. Yeah. and what's interesting and i said all along you know it's always a big risk when you've got a defection and mr anderson is a slightly unexploded bomb at times let's say he's not one to mince his words but if this precipitates a lot of people following suit and saying do you know what He's right. This is the way forward. The Conservative Party don't represent me. And some of these names circulating, if they go, right, that's it, I'm coming too. Wow. Yeah. We've got a situation where reform's only about five percentage points behind the Tories. If we go up three, yeah. well, it's not we, they. All, they, you, all, you, need, all you need is a few uh, wannabe MPs, a few candidates to keep their promises about by-elections, and you could win something. <laughs> uh, but if you're going to employ all of these liars who don't keep their promises, who knows what fate may await you at the ballot box. No, uh, but uh, anyway, anyway, here's good news for yeah. Lee and the gang. Uh, Boris Johnson is to make a general election comeback. He's going to campaign in the Red Wall uh, constituencies for the Tories, but he won't appear on the same stage as his old enemy, Rishi Sunak, but he is going to help I mean... the Tories. Do you think it'll change the dial? No. I don't think it will Because either. maybe they keep doing all this, this polling, don't they? The 5,362 yeah. different factions on the right wing of the Conservative Party, from the New Conservatives to the, yeah. oh, I don't know, the ERG to the... There's so many of them, uh, the mafia families, as they call themselves, or someone calls them. Yeah. And they keep doing all these various polls, saying, oh, we need Kemi Badenoch to be leader, then we'd win the election. Then, oh, we need Boris to come back, then we'd win an election. He's not an MP, remember, so he can't lead the party. And I think people are not that nuanced. They'll just go, what, are we not voting for Boris as prime minister, then we're not voting? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's not... Do what you like, you what know. Do you think, though, make Alex, him walk around in the drizzle in the north and let's see if it helps things. Well, yeah, well, I mean, you know, he, he'll be sort of setting out his own story. All, of course, I'm Boris. Oh, I'm coming like Boris. back. Bojo, book Bojo's not finished yet. Yes, you are, mate, sir, because you're a green claptrap spouter. Uh, but anyway, uh, do you think it'll make any difference? Because I don't think it will. Well, I think the Tories will lose every oh, member in <laughs> seat, don't you? <laughs> Do you want a real laugh this morning? Yes. Yeah. So the Conservative Party strategy, right? So oh, even yeah. if Boris did win votes, he's going to be immediately cancelled out because Sunak is preparing to enlist the support of two former prime ministers during the election campaign. Johnson and Lord Spadeface of Sheeping Norton, oh. <laughs> the Foreign Secretary. Rishi. Cameron Rishi. is expected to be deployed widely. Oh, uh, everybody and, uh, hates him. Said he's a winner and a hugely effective it's communicator. Not a winner. No, he's not. Why is Sunak, you <laughs> fool? Everybody hates Cameron no, and everybody like hates Sadie. Jeremy Hunt. Why are you so are you useless? Doing? Drives me Brilliant. nuts. It's like we're going to bring back Boris to campaign. Boom! And then we're going to bring back Spadeface. Oh. Here's a kind of problem for the Tories. Their biggest donor who's handed over uh, more than upwards of £10 million, <laughs> a guy bad, named uh, Frank Hester, uh, is in the middle of a race row uh, because it's a while ago, actually, uh, when she was... Ten years ago. When she was uh, Shadow Home Secretary. Uh, he, uh, called, he said... Uh, she's the sort of person that makes you want to hate all black women. Uh, and she also said, he also said that uh, she should be shot. Uh, so this is something of a race row. Uh, whatever you think of Diane Abbott, it's... she doesn't deserve that to be yeah, said. Yeah, no, her. really appalling words. Let's yeah, not yeah, pretend yeah. they're not. Yeah. But one thing I do find a bit mad here is apparently these comments were made about yeah, a long think, time quite ago, a while yeah. ago. Um, and over the course of however many years, he's given five million quid to the Conservative Party and another five Five million quid to the Conservative Party. And of course, the Guardian and all of their sort of Guardian Easters on the BBC are, oh, you should give them money back. Give them money back. Yeah. He's told, he said these awful things. Give yeah. the 10 million back. And I'm like, ah. Oh. That doesn't make sense. That's a bit like saying to the BBC, you know all those people who pay licence fees, you do realise 80% of them aren't woke, so give them their money back. Yeah, here, here's I'm the, like, what, you're giving money back to people who make problem, racist yeah. comments now? The logic just doesn't make sense. You've got West Streeting harumphing in Parliament. This is utterly revolting, racist and insightful language. But it no has no place in our politics said. or public life. Well, the point is, uh, Wes, here's your problem. No-one's heard of Frank Hester. This but, will not gain any also, traction. no-one even knew this... 
been said in some yeah, private no meeting. Yeah. It's a bit like digging up some sort of corpse and go, oh my God, yeah. it's a corpse. It's, 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 what he said is wrong it's and arguably racist, uh, but, but yeah, it's a it's long definitely. time ago and nobody's heard of Frank Hester. So good luck with this as a campaign. Yeah, ain't gonna it. Work. Now, uh, Rishi, this one, this one, front page of the Telegraph today, drives me nuts. Uh, Rishi Sunak has now set out comprehensive plans to build a series of gas power stations Yay. to stop blackouts on cloudy, windless days. Oh, really, Sherlock? Mm -hmm, Thank mm -hmm, you so mm -hmm. much. What have we been saying? And by the way, suddenly we're talking about net zero. They still want to ch achieve something. I haven't heard of this one before. Mm -hmm. Net zero electricity by 2035, not net zero by 2050. Uh, what on earth? Th th this is because, Alex, this is because, mm -hmm. uh, guess what? It's often not very sunny in this country. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed that. And uh, often not very windy. So when it's not windy, the windmills don't create power. When it's not sunny, the solar panels don't yeah. create power. So, so you need <clears throat> gas power stations. So if you want to know a little bit of a factoid, let's contextualise as we like to do Just on this programme. Um, so apparently uh, renewables and wind make up 44%, 44% of wow. our grid these days, the wind ones. Yesterday, do you know how much electricity hey, go on, contributed? Go on. 16. It's, it's perfect. See? Look, the, the, look, look, let's just, just we're crystallise We're warm to rubbish if, it, if the wind doesn't blow. When these politicians tell you we are going full renewable. We are. This entire country will be uh, powered by windmills and uh, solar panels and renewable forms of energy. It is a lie, you know as this announcement today proves. If you yep. don't have traditional old school power stations ready to back you yeah. up, we will all and be also, in the dark. We'll FY, lose all our power. FYI, if we didn't have this and gas storage, which we're kindly getting from our friends in Qatar, um, we would be in big trouble because the French no longer have control of their uranium. The Russians have nicked it. That makes up 75% of the French grid, which actually props up the whole EU base load. And we've got a big electricity cable between us and Europe. So if we've got more power and then we give it to them. And if not, it goes yeah. the other direction. So all this renewable fun, fun in the sun you're having, when there is no fun in the sun, guess what? The lights don't go on. Yeah, and so, also, also given that Rishi Singh has just implicitly admitted we need a load of traditional yep. old school power Yesterday. stations, what that means is 2050, carbon net zero, never going to happen. People don't even know what it is anyway. We are being conned by these virtue signaling idiots in Westminster. Their plans cannot happen. They cannot work. And uh, stop the madness. Let's get okay. real about this. Let's talk about the, uh, the police. Uh, nice. Sir Mark Rowley, the uh, head of the Met Police, uh, has had a go, has hit out at armchair commentators who criticise the police. That's us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Suck it up. Hard luck. We're not going to stop. Uh, at the weekend, a demonstrator uh, out there in London uh, held up a flag uh, saying uh, that Hamas were terrorists. He was descended on by a load of cops and arrested. Meanwhile, a load of uh, pro-Palestinians celebrating Houthi murders yeah. uh, nearby were left alone. Uh, that We will not yeah. stop commentating on no. that, Mark, because that's double standards and that's wrong. We saw what happened. He says no one saw the full footage and the complexity and what was going on and police officers having a hard time, they don't want to come to work anymore because everyone's filming it and criticising them and so on and so forth. Give them clear instructions. You're the man at the top of the tree. Tell them who they should and shouldn't arrest yep. and then they can follow those instructions. And also, Mr Rowley, you telling me that I've been an armchair commentator? I tried to get in touch with the Met Police on two occasions when I got mugged. They didn't even have the courtesy to listen to me or reply. Did they not? No. Did they not? No. See? I got mugged, mate, and you didn't do anything. So, didn't Mark, even reply to fill out some online form. So do you know what? If I want to be an armchair commentator, I will. So, here, yeah. Sir Mark, I've got a little message for you. When people break the law, why don't you get your officers to arrest yeah. them? Still don't analyse what jihad means or the ri river to the mm -hmm. sea. Don't look for reasons arrest not them. to arrest lawbreakers. Arrest them. Do your damn job, and then armchair commentators will not be keeping having a go at you, exactly. will they? Exactly. There you go. Now, talking about armchair commentators, uh, four million people on benefits, no doubt sitting in their armchairs with no requirement to work, is that uh, twice as many people don't even have to look for a job, apparently. Yeah. The gap has widened since COVID. Some 3.9 million people yeah. on means-tested benefit, no work requirements, uh, up a fifth in three years. Uh, how are these people getting away with it? With 
the whole work from home culture, you can't go, I've got a bad back, I can't work anymore. No, you can because you don't have to leave your house anymore to work. So maybe just, you know, log on to a computer. Yeah, these figures were compiled uh, for The Times uh, by uh, the consultancy Policy in Practice. And uh, what they've established is, surprise, surprise, ever since the furlough scheme, people have become work shy and yep. lazy. And they've come up with ways to evade the usual system, which is, yes, you can be off, uh, you can be unemployed, but you've got to be looking for work. Now, if you can say, oh, I've got a terrible back, or I've got mental health problems, then you don't have to look for work. 3.9, nearly 4 million people are in that when state When I was now. a kid at school, I'd basically have to have a severed limb and an eyeball rolling across the floor for my mum to let me stay at home. And so I was like, well, you go to school anyway and you'll feel better by break when you started to get into your lessons. And she's right. All last week, I got onto the world's most crowded tube, had to put my face in someone's armpit, was feeling like death took yeah. some paracetamol, came and did, did this show twice a day. And um, for that privilege, I give 50% of everything that I earn, <laughs> which I've worked really hard to get with 100-hour weeks, by the way. No one rolled out a red carpet to get me where I am today. I give 50% of that to people sitting at home who don't want to lift a finger. Quite, what exactly a wonderful right. world we Stop live in. Stop the madness once again. Stop now, uh, the Tory MP for uh, South Dorset, Richard Drax, says that people who consistently turn down work, uh, a la what we were just talking about, should be conscripted into the services, love into it. the army. I love bet it. you like that one, don't you? I love it. I mean, I've just got to the stage now. Now we know <laughs> we've it. basically <laughs> got no armed forces and Russia's going to invade us next week because we're useless. I'm really for this <laughs> idea that we should just bring back conscription full stop. Because whenever I'm walking around London and I'm seeing all these kids with their hoods up carrying knives on bikes, I think, do you want to be paid to carry that weapon? Yeah. yeah, I know somewhere you could go. Uh, and I just think this would actually bring, especially the sort of, you know, the youth who don't want to do anything, who don't like their country, who are all snowflakes, who'd rather go about mugging people than actually contributing to society. Again, the cohort uh, to, who I give 50% of my salary to prop up for reasons I don't know. Why not say to them, how about do some press-ups, run around a field, learn why Britain's great, and protect our liberty? Yeah, and, uh, I just want a question. Uh, I've got a question about Richard Love it. Dutch. She's the <clears throat> Drax, he's the MP, the Tory MP for South Dorset, who never ever comes on to any show to talk about the Bibby Stockholm, the migrants barge yeah, that I he want, sometimes comments on. But it, why won't he talk to the media about it? Oh, probably not allowed to. Stop worrying about CHQ. conscription, Talk about mate, this one. Come, no, come on, I should right. talk about conscription. Uh, yeah, all right, well, Big conscription fun. as well. But come on and talk to us about the Bibby Stockholm. He really, really you know what should. what we could call the campaign to make society yeah. better? Conscription medicine. It's conscription medicine, yeah. That'll, that'll, that'll win you a lot of uh, votes. <laughs> right. right, Keir Starmer, uh, another U-turn, everyone. Oh. Yet another one. Uh, he has now, he's done something that I agree with, by the oh way. My he didn't used to believe this, but he's now backed a ban on transgender athletes competing in female sports. Uh, common sense has finally dawned on uh, Keir Starmer. That is the correct approach, uh, but it took him a long time, and of course, you know, it's another U-turn. What I find utterly sick about this, I mean, thank you, you finally realise yeah, yeah, that women got... can't have penises, slow round of a poor And, and maybe Lego it's not head. fair if blokes but compete against... But the fact that he was happy to throw women's safety and women's rights under a bus to look woke, because he thought that was, um, you know, going to be popular with like, I don't yeah. know who, metropolitan elites. Um, and has only changed his mind because it might lose him the election. You have no spine. You have no integrity. How dare you suddenly want to protect women's safety because otherwise you'd lose the election, you sado. Although your new glasses are quite nice. Uh, Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan have been detained in Romania over a uh, British uh, arrest oh, warrant. Oh, I can't stick him. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the details are. Uh, the allegations including sexual aggression cover alleged offences from 2012 to 2015. Tate brothers uh, categorically reject all charges, so the saga involving, involving little baldy Tate uh, continues to face. just rancid, aren't they? I was kind of hoping when they were released from prison, some sort of disgruntled father from a Romanian family would go and, like, scalp them or something, but yeah. that hasn't happened. Yeah. So this is the next best thing. Just a sort of pathetic little bald guy but, who gross. pretends he's rich. If you're that rich, you wouldn't live in a Such warehouse a uh, by an airport in Romania, would you? <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, let's carry on. Let's uh, go straight and watch Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, the Israeli Prime Minister, of course, talking to Fox News about his attitude to Joe Biden, who keeps telling him to stop the aggression in Gaza. Let's have a listen to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, I'm telling you that we're not getting off the gas. 
I'm telling you that we have to take care of Israel's security in our future, and that requires eliminating the terrorist army. That's a, a, a prerequisite for victory. That victory is important not only for us, it's important for the civilized world as we're fighting these barbarians. We have to destroy this uh, terrorist Nazi army, otherwise uh, there's no future for anyone in the Middle East. That is, a, uh, uh, metaphorically, is uh, uh, Netanyahu telling Joe Biden, up yours, yeah. I'm not stopping you know, until we've your, destroyed Hamas. Go on your fancy little marches at the weekend, Netanyahu is not listening. Yeah, he's not going to stop, he's not going to stop. stop. His mission is to destroy Hamas and he will. Uh, now, finally, another <laughs> member of the Harry Potter cast so shows ingratitude on an epic scale. Miriam Margulis enrages Harry Potter fans by saying uh, they should get over that book about the schoolboy wizard and maybe grow up because it's a book for children. Let's have a look at Miriam. I worry about Harry Potter fans because they should be over that by now. You know, I mean, it was 25 years ago and it's for children. I think it's for children. But they get stuck in it. I, and I do cameos and people say, oh, we're having a Harry Potter themed wedding. And I think, gosh, what's their first night of fun going to be. I can't, I, can't, I can't even think about it, no. Uh, Harry Potter is wonderful, I'm very grateful to it, it's, it's over. Do you know what I'd do if I were... I don't, I don't disagree with her. I don't like that woman, by the way. I don't know why she's constantly called a national treasure and I think she's a bit of a misanthropic moanhead. But, um, <clears throat> but I, uh, she's right. I don't she's right. actually disagree with her. It is a book for kids, isn't it? It always was and a book for kids. And if you're 50 years old and talking about Hufflepuff and things like that and sorting hats, then you probably need to grow up. Yeah, I was a film critic. I had to go and see a few Harry Potter films. I never quite got it. I never understood the books. They are for children, but a lot of people enjoy them. Brilliant and it seems brilliant. a bit ungrateful of her to say. Reading. Here's what, if I had a Harry Potter film themed wedding, uh, do you know what I'd say to my what would wife, you say? to my witch wife or whatever I'd say, do what? you want to see my wand? Do you think that would work? Look at this. I feel like I just want some tumbleweed to like be superimposed across the you, bottom of the screen. with you because you don't get screen. jokes. That wasn't a great joke, though, was it? It was a I very mean, good you know. joke. It was a hilarious joke. to call joke. if you liked Kev's joke is 0344, don't bother, because you can call us instead yeah, yeah, a bit later at 1 o'clock. Tell us on Cross Talk. Tell us, tell us, tell us was that a good joke? 0344 499 1000. Well done for Can remember Kevin that tell number? jokes or not? Sadly, though, Alex, we've come to the end of another hilarious show. Hey, join <laughs> us for Cross Talk 1 o'clock. We're going to do this because we Cross Talk 1 p.m. Up next is. Julia Hartley Brewer. We've still got 10 seconds to go. So, here we go. Oh. That's a Harry Potter for you. Is that a Harry Potter I don't Potter? know, maybe. Game of Thrones, something like that. <laughs> there you go. Bye. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. Ooh, uh, <laughs>